Has anybody else got any good uh, April Fool's pranks? You got any ideas? Yeah, you got any ideas? Said, have you got any ideas? Uh, well, the cling film's a good one. Over the toilet, that's a good one. Has anybody else got any good... You, uh, you could do it in a doorway as well. <laughs> do, that, do it to the toilet at work. Do it to the toilet at work, yeah. Put the <laughs> film down. Probably, you put a little bit of sellotype over a telephone. You do put a telephone. Put a little bit of sellotype over the microphone. Uh, you just do it at work. So answer the phone and the people can't hear them and they're talking. I <laughs> can't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> That's really bad at a fire it's station not, to do it's that. not a good idea at a fire station, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Well, can't you hear me? <laughs> oh, oh, too you, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe the some of the stuff that's gone on over the years. Really? Re- real bad, yeah. Well, we're live now, so probably best not share it here. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, no. Let us know in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Morning, guys. Welcome to Kettle and Coffee. Um, welcome to Kettle and Coffee. You're going to need a kettlebell and a coffee. Nice chilled workout today. Um, <coughs> we're going to focus on some skill. So today's opportunity isn't to beat you down and leave you a pile on the floor. Today's focus is to learn how to use the kettlebell properly. You guys are pretty good at this. Um, so we'll recap over some stuff. Make sure you're doing it correctly. And um, and just fine tuning things as well. So the next time or every time that you're using kettlebells, you're doing it with good form, good technique. Okay. So grab yourself a coffee because we'll have a nice chill workout, and um, and you'll get plenty out of this towards the end. We'll up it a little bit more, much like we did on um, on Tuesday, and um, have a nice little finish. Okay. So let's get nice and mobile with your reach to begin with. So you're going to try and or you're going to attempt to. Tilt the spine over, flex the spine to the side, and as you do this, opposite hands, one goes over, one goes under, and you're gonna let your ring it out a towel, you're gonna really squeeze. So you're gonna feel your lat squeeze down here, feel your, your shoulder stretching apart as you lean over to the side, okay? Um, we'll do five on each side, so a total of, total of 10 reps. So reach over, and again, other side. Three. Four more. Good. Take time, no rush. Make sure you get a good stretch out of those. Perfect. Okay, next one, we're going to rotate. So if you've got 12 o'clock straight ahead, you've got 6 o'clock uh, directly behind you, you're going to get your hands to face those two positions. And as you do, I want you to reach as far out as you can. Okay, stretch as far out as you can forwards. Um, and really get this rib cage to rotate through. Your feet want to stay shoulder width apart. Don't let, adjust those feet. And we'll do five on each side to a total of 10 points again. So reach. Don't rush. Reach. We'll do 10. Eight more. Four more. Good. All done? Nice, okay. So then we're gonna take it into a hand walk, feet shoulder width apart, oh sorry, just outside shoulder width apart. 
Um, we're going to walk the hands all the way down into a plank position, push up at the bottom if you can, and then walk all the way back in and then get a good stretch into these hamstrings, into these calves before we go into another rep. We do a total of 10 reps again. So feet, shoulder width, just let's say shoulder apart. My hands are really tight today. Hands on the floor, walk the hands out, push up the bottom if we can, walk back in, get a good stretch, walk back out again. Oh. Ah. Good, get a good stretch into those hamstrings as you go through. As mine is super tight after Tuesday. Well done, guys. Okay, and stay in a seat position. We're going to finish on the child's pose, uh, spine wave. So, child's pose into cobra. So, you curve your spine up and then sink the hips down at the chest. So, child's pose to begin with. Forehead on the floor, hips, thumb on your heels, roll forwards, tuck the tail, round the chest, chin on your chest. Bring the shoulders towards the wrist to stretch the fingertips, sink the hips, lift the chest, squeeze the glutes, and back. Let's do five of these, push back, roll the spine, tuck the tail, sink the hips, lift the chest, and again, push back. Okay. When you do your child's pose, try and push your armpits towards the floor. Lift it up, those shoulders. Good. Good stuff. Well done, guys. Okay, on to your feet. First thing then, um, we're going to start with the swing. To ensure that you're doing proper kettlebell swings. Common mistakes that we see with the swing, people leaning forwards like this, um, so not drawing the hips back, or the other one is squatting. You shouldn't do either. So you shouldn't be squatting and you shouldn't be bending over with you shoulders in front of your toes when you do a kettlebell swing. Okay. What you should be doing is drawing the hips backwards. So if you go ahead and, and chop your pinkies into the crease of your hips, go ahead and do this. And what I want to do, and how you note how you do it correctly, is that as you hinge, you should, your thighs and your torso should pinch your pinky finger. So chop it into the crease of the hips. Now go ahead and draw the hips backwards so you can feel that pinch of the fingers. That's when you know you're doing it correctly. Okay? Stand up tall, then you shouldn't feel anything cooking the hands. Okay? So you should pinch across those fingers. Okay? Crease the hips, draw the hips back. Okay, there you go. So ass is six inches behind the heel, okay? Not over the heel. You don't want to do that because that puts all the pressure in your back. What we want to do is put the pressure into the hamstrings and the glutes. So we're squeezing those hips backwards towards the wall. And you should feel your toes lift up and the weight go into the heels. Draw the hips back. And then we stand up. Now, before we get to the stand, the spine wants to stay perfectly flat. So we're pushing the, from the tailbone to the crown of your head, one straight line. So as we hinge, we're keeping that chin tucked in, Keep that spine straight and in a neutral position as we can. The only movement coming forwards isn't from the spine itself, it's coming from the hip hinge, okay? We hinge it from those hips. Okay, so that's the hinge. Show me your hinge. Go, 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 go ahead. Show me your hinge. Good. Yeah, a bit more ass backwards for me, Avi. 
Yeah, and the knees don't want to be locked out, but we don't want, we want them a bit soft. So not locked out, but we don't want to squat. So just soft, hinge, yeah? And the tighter your hamstrings are, the more you can use a knee bend, the subtler your hamstrings, the less you need it. But you, you do want a slight bend in those hamstrings, okay? Right. So when we do, when we do snatches, we're gonna work on that again today. When we do cleans, you're still using the hinge, okay? The heavier your weight is, the more you're gonna need that hinge, okay? Because that's where you generate your momentum, the pendulum of that kettlebell, right? It's not a dumbbell, don't lift it like a dumbbell. You're using that inertia of the kettlebell swinging, okay? That pendulum. So every time we drop that bell, we wanna receive it into the hips, like so, okay? Unless if we're just doing a straight floor press or clean snatch, etc. If we're going out at the hips, you want to you make sure you're using that, drawing the hips back, loading the hammies and the glutes, and then a punch off the hips to get that kettlebell to, to swing forward, okay? Right, the next part of the swing is the punch, okay? So as you're here, punch as aggressively as you can. The heavier the bell, the more you've got to do it. The lighter the bell, the less you're really going to learn that you need to do this. Um, you could attach a band to the kettlebell so that when you throw, you've got to throw some more force if you've got a light kettlebell. But you've got to, you want that bit powerful. Try and get to move the bell as quickly as you can. So receive the, the bell, punch the bell, okay? Get it to float up. Your finishing position, okay? We, if we're doing fast reps, we can break at the elbow. What I want you to do for these reps is I want you to have your arms extended so you can get used to switching on these lats. You want to close your armpits so your lats are turned on, your shoulder blades are down, okay? Ribs down, abs on, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads. That's your finishing position. And when the, the float out of the bell has disappeared, we receive the kettlebell back into the hips again. Punch, tight, receive. Punch, tight, receive. So that tight position at the top. Close your armpits, turn the lats on. Ribs down, abs on, squeeze the quads, squeeze the glutes, brace. And then the final thing is that breath. Breathe in for the nose as we're going down, out for the teeth as we're throwing up. <laughs> as we're throwing up, try not to throw up. Give me a set of 10 swings as I've just demonstrated. Before we do, I want you to ensure that you're doing a dead start and a dead stop. So all that means is the kettlebell's on the floor, step back a foot or two, chop and drop at the hips, grab the hands, the, the, your hands on top of the kettlebell, pull your laps down, your shoulder blades down, slide back, lean back slightly, and then when you're ready, hike it into your groin, deep breath in, and punch. Give me 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and finish with a dead stop. So for the dead stop, receive the kettlebell back into the groin, and let it drift out. Don't just go swinging to floor or to the side, if you're able to do that, your kettlebell's way too light. Okay, catch your breath. We'll do another set, all eyes on you this time. So once again, hinge, receive, get the wrist as tight to your groin as you can. You don't want the bell to go under the, knee, the knees. If you do that, the spine starts to round. Remember, we said uh, non-negotiables, crown to tailbone, one flat line. Hinge, tight to the groin. And when you feel the peak of the pressure, the wrist connects to the groin, that's when you punch, get it to float, turn the lats on, ribs on, quads on, glutes on, exhale, and go again, okay? Right, give me, all eyes on you, another set of 10. Give me a dead start and a dead start. Let's go. Dead start, hike and punch. Bit more hinge for me, Abby. Good, 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 mm -hmm, good. Yeah, squeeze your glutes at the top. Get that kettlebell to float. And when it's at chest height, brace. Arms long, arms long, give me 10. Yeah, good job. Get it to float. Punch with those hips. Finish with that dead stop. Rock it back and to the floor. Squat to the floor. Yeah, good work. One more round. Um, so with that dead stop, just like the dead start, if, if you, as you, you hinge, you squat. Okay, that's all it is. It's just a safe technique. You're still carrying the momentum or decelerating the momentum of the bow. 
a safe technique to pick up and put down the kettlebell. Just get into good practice using it. Sip a bit of coffee. Caffeinate to operate. One more set for me, please, guys. Nice and strong, nice and powerful. Use that breath. Three, two, one, go. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Hinge and punch, hinge and punch. Good, give me a set of 10. <sighs> <clears throat> nice job. Nice job. Well done, well done, well done. Lovely. Real good stuff. Finish with your dead stop. <clears throat> Finish with that dead stop. Yeah, Raj. Taj, let it swing back and let it swing forwards a little bit more with that dead stop. Okay, good. Right. So that's that ticked off. Okay. Um, on your checklist. Five stars for that. Right, so moving on to the kettlebell clean now. So hand position, we spoke about this the other day. Finger it, don't fist it, yeah? Don't see, so what I mean is don't grip it like you would with a dumbbell, because that won't want to move, okay? And then you lose seconds that you need to move that kettlebell, okay? It delays you, so you, you'll, you'll be either punching your wrist, etc. So you want to finger hook it like this. Finger it, don't fist it. The next thing is that you, the, the, the position of the handle is important. The middle, you've not got use of the thumb. The back, you've not got use of your thumb. Your thumb's a wonderful thing because it's going to allow you to have support and, and lock the wrist, okay? So what you want to do, the L of the kettlebell here and the L of your thumb and index finger, that web in there locks into that bit. That's, that's where it goes, okay? Even when you transition grip, that's what you want to aim for. Sometimes when you transition grip, okay, you might change your grip, want to go on top, want to go on the bottom. Well, you want to get into the habit of being able to swap into both, both sides to get into that top position grip, okay? Um, because when you do, say, well, when you're in a rack position, look at that bar diagonally down the wrist, it's fixed, okay? It's not all over the place. Especially when I press, that kettlebell's locked in. Okay, because I've got the use of the thumb. If I was to grip it in the middle or the back, I haven't got use of the thumb now. So when I press, it can twist all over the place, you see? So I want to have it in the center and I don't need to grip it. I can have an open hand now. I have an open hand. And like we just mentioned, we shave it off milliseconds. So when we are transitioning, when we are doing things, it becomes slicker and smoother, um, less clunky, less injuries. You, you, you're able to soften the cushion of the exercise a lot better, okay? Right, we're gonna go into cleans now. So from the hip, we'll start with a dead start, we'll hike it back, hook grip, and then you're gonna punt, you're gonna shrug the shoulder, snap the elbow back, bring the, the forearm into a vertical position, okay? Elbows tucked in, forearms vertical, wrist is pulled in, we don't want a floppy wrist, wrist is pulled in, and the, the bell's gonna sit diagonally here, okay? And then we're going to, to release, we nudge it forwards into extension, into the hinge, okay, so head goes forwards, ask us back six inches, just like the kettlebell swing, the single arm kettlebell swing, and then um, we will swing to swap to the other hand, hinge again, and then punch back through. So we do, do the other side, okay? Let's have a little run through. So hook grip, we're going to start from that dead stop, back nice and long, hike it back, punch it through. Okay, catch it up, roll it up, roll it up the body. And your goal is to do it as soft as you, as you can. To release, extend it out, hinge, swap, and then do it on the other side. Extend out, hinge, swap, hinge, other side. Good, get the bell to land soft. So we don't want it here, out to the side, boom, tight here. Let's go other side, good. Hinge, swap, hinge, catch, good. I just did a high transition by accident. Pin swap, pinch, catch. Good, good. Okay, we'll do a set of 10, so five on each side. Um, so don't remember, I, I forgot just, don't forget the, 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 the swing to swap, swing clean. Sw release out, swing, swap, swing clean. That's why it's nice to do the high transition, because you can eliminate the swing and swap. You can just go straight to the other side, okay? More on that in a moment because we're going to go into the snatch and the high transition. Okay, um, so let's do a set of 10 together, five on each side with the swing and swap in between. 
when you do the swing and swap, don't be like this. You want every time that kettlebell leaves your body, torso tall, rib cage over the hips, okay? Rib cage over the hips, very important. Ready in three, dead start, two, one, go. Clean, good. Get it to land soft, bottom facing down. Release, swing, swap, clean. There's two, release, swing, swap. Three, good. Release, swing, swap. Four, six more. Release, swing, swap. Good. Get to land soft. Release, swing, swap. Good. Release, swing, swap. Two more. Release, swing, Three more, sorry. Two more. Swing, swap. Good. Use that hinge. Swing, swap. Good. Finish with a dead stop. Good. Yeah, good. So now you're getting, using technique, okay? You're using that technique. No longer do you need to, um, no longer do you need to throw the bastard away. Especially with the clean, if you're throwing it forwards, you've got to put it back in, and that's when it's going to punch you and bruise you. You want to keep the kettlebell clean to the body. Okay? Another technique, okay, so what you probably just did, thumb forwards, but even an, a, a more slicker technique of, of creating momentum is to have the, bum, the thumb towards the bum. See that? And as you turn the thumb up, it rolls up the body simply, okay? If you twist that thumb towards the bum, you just twist the wrist out of it, okay? To change the wrist. Okay, give me another set of 10. All eyes on you. Another set of 10. Don't forget to use your hinge for momentum. Thumb to bum if you want to. Three, two, one, go. Dead start. Good. Swing, swap. Good. Okay. Good. Hmm. Good. Get to land soft. Get to land soft. Well done. Good. Yeah, get it to land towards your inner chest, towards the center. Don't throw it over your shoulder like a handbag, okay? You don't want to throw it out to the side. Good, Abby. Neil, well done. Good job. Good job, team. Well done, well done. Bash, make sure every time that kettlebell goes forward, your rib cage is over the hips. Move those hips more. All right. Good. Okay, one more set. We'll add a press on there. Um, shake it out. Right. Taj, Raj, when you do the clean, all right, not out here. I want it real, like close your armpits. So we're like, we've got a boxing guard, right? Elbow tucked in, forearm vertical, wrist pulled in. Don't, so what we don't want is to throw it over our shoulder like that, like it's a handbag. I want it. I want it just coming into the chest like this, okay? And then just cradle it on the outside of the arm. So it's not gonna be on your chest, okay? But I want the arm it closed. So I want the arm on your chest. I want this tight, but the kettlebell cradle on the outside, okay? So not out here when we go up, when we go up, okay? Because that as well, not good for the shoulder, not good for the, the rotary, rotary cuff, especially with some more weight. In fact, your arm will snap off if you use, use the trunk or something like that. Um, and also not good for pressing. We're going to do a press on this last set, okay? So I will do six reps um, with the press this time. So you're clean up, tight, remember? From here, deep breath in, ribs over the hip. Deep breath in will set the rib cage over the pelvis, okay? So, so we're not like this. And then from there, make a fist to the opposite hand. Press it right overhead, right out to the side. Lower it back down, release, swing, swap. Clean, deep breath. Exhale, press overhead, control it down, swing swap. So we'll do three on each side, a total of six. Also bash, your swing swap, make sure that, that when we swing swap, okay, I want you to punch the hips forwards with it as well. Don't forget that bit. So at the moment, you just allow the, the momentum of the bell to swing swap, and then you're in a, an awkward position where you spine. So when you receive the bell, just remember, it's this back and forth with the hips, okay? So hinge, and then ribs over the hips. If you thrust the hips forward, just get those hips forwards for me. 
when you do the swing swap, as you were when you do the cleans and the swings, okay? Right, give me a set of six this time, guys, but I want a overhead press. Ready, dead start, three, two, one, go. Clean, deep breath, press. Lower, control, release, swing, swap, clean, tight, deep breath. Three on each side, turn the six, control that, swing, swap, swing, clean. Draw down, swing, swap, swing. Good, two more. Good. One on each side, well done guys. Don't get that hinge, I have a hinge more. So you're creating momentum with the hips. So it's, the whole body's working it. People can say you're using kettlebells like dumbbells, like your bicep curling. No, 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 no. You're using the whole body, the calves, the hammies, the glutes, the abs. Your backside gets, your posterior chain gets hit every time that you do that kettlebell swing. Lovely stuff. Right, okay, last one, last one. Then we're gonna put it into a big finisher. Am I back on screen? Okay. Right, here we go. So, you, your high transition, which we worked on. So, the, the kettlebell clean, okay? The same technique is used in the snatch, okay? So, the snatch is that, but instead of it landing at the shoulder, it's gonna land overhead. It's, it's, the arm does exactly the same, you just want it to go overhead. Lower it down, okay? So, it's, and lower it down, all right? Remember that wrist position. Get the cat about thumb, index, finger, and the top out like this. So when we're, when hook grip here, hook grip, little twist of the thumb behind, and as you pull, shrug, keep it close to the body. Shrug with the shoulder, okay, pull the elbow in. You're just gonna give it more juice so it goes overhead. Okay, and then that open hand position, you see that hand, boom, locked in position. Where it, 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 it's fixed, it's, my shoulder's safe because that kettlebell ain't swinging all over the place, okay? So the snatch is just the same technique with the kettlebell swing, only here, you're gonna really take a deep breath and throw the bastard as high up <laughs> into the ceiling as you can. Hook grip at the bottom, finger it down, fist it, and then slip it in, all four fingers, when it's overhead, okay? Finishing position, brace, nose, belly button, abs on tight, strong. Lower it down, okay, we can swing it down to the next rep, I want you to lower it down, right? Let's do five on each side, okay, five snatches on each side. It's just the kettlebell clean technique, but throw the bastard higher. Do five on your right, five on your left. Start with a dead start, three, two, one, snatch. One, lower. Swing to release, hips, go again, two. Lower, swing to release. The bigger the hinge, the more power you can put in that bell. Two more, lower. Good, lower, one more. Good, lower to floor, good. Yeah, go on, Taj, well done. Good, just throw it, throw it. That if, if you're timid with it, it's more likely going to beat you up. But if you throw the bastard up and boss it, that's when you're going to tell it where you want it to go. Okay? And then it's just a case of then feeling it. Right? It's, it's exactly like your kettlebell clean, but just instead of here, the wrist is doing the same, but you're throwing it to here. Okay? And the harder, the, the bigger the hinge, the more you can punch into it, the more it floats up, the easier it is to control the kettlebell. Really good work, guys. Well done. Give me five on each side. Lower, release. Lower, release. Lower, release. Lower, release. Good. So, also, do two more sets. Also, when you get it, when you've done the hinge, remember, the bigger the hinge, the more you can punch and float the kettlebell up. Remember, don't go long way up, go short way up, close to your body. Now, your punch, the bigger you punch it, the more it's gonna float up. You might only get to here, okay? Perfect. As long as it's higher than head height, you can then finish off by punching it through, yeah? So if you throw it up here, 
And then now your fingertips are pointing up, your thumbs underneath it, okay, in that open hand position. If you get it to here, floating the kettlebell up, you finish with beat to the punch. So just before that kettlebell becomes heavy, yeah, you've just put the force into it here, it's floating, it's floating, it's floating, it's still floating up. Before the kettlebell gets heavy, we're in this position here, we're not exactly over here just yet. From here, we can beat it to the punch, yeah? Punch it right overhead. Again, that's all it is, right? That's all it is, especially with heavier bells, you will go in and get it to here, and then you've got to finish with the press, with the punch, okay? Right, let's do another set, five on each side. Good stuff, guys. Tackers, tackers, tackers. Hinge, punch, lower, down. Good, 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 good. Keep it going. Show me all eyes on you. Throw, boss it. Good, boss it. Well done. Good, beat it to the punch. Well done. Five on each side. Beat it to the punch. Go on, throw it harder. Throw it harder. Throw it harder. From the hips to overhead, throw it harder. That's it. Shrug it in towards you. Don't throw it away. That's it. So it's rolling up close to the body. Good bash. Hey, think L on L. L on L. Open hand when it's overhead. Hook grip when it's down below. Hook grip when it's down. Open hand. Slip the fingers in when it's overhead. Five on each side. Good job. All right. Warming up, warming up, warming up. So then, well done, team. All right, last set. So the, the keep going, Todd. Good work. Um, and don't throw it out, out here, always right overhead. So it's nice and streamlined, quick through the middle. Remember, if it's not quite making it high enough, you can put more force here, generate more force. Pulling it in towards the body. So when we pull it in, shrug the shoulder, pull the elbow in, just like you would with the kettlebell clean, but you're gonna finish it over here. Right, now, What's probably slightly easy is the high transition. It sound, you've got to be obviously switched on, you've got to have good coordination. But the high transition, you've just got to throw the basket up and then you get to slip the hand through. You're just passing it over from one side to the other. So from here, and slip the hand through like that, okay? We can lower it down and then do it again. Slip the hand through. So all, all I'm doing, I need like a, a foam kettlebell so I can demonstrate these in slow-mo. Okay, so all I'm doing, Okay, is, is that, yeah? I'm bringing that kettlebell up like this and I'm just slipping my hand through. So I don't even need to rotate the wrist anymore. The hand that I slip through can do it. So the high transition is actually easier, but you just gotta be switched on with your coordination so that Avi doesn't end up with another crater in his room. <laughs> don't drop the belt. So the, with, the, with, the, with the high transition snatch, it's just pull the bastard up like this, slip the other hand through, rotate so your palms facing towards me, okay? Now we can lower and release, or if you're up for it, we can go a long way down and go again, boom. Long way down and go again, boom. Let me show you a couple of reps of those. So dead start. Oh, sorry. Hard transition. One, long way down. Two, long way down. Three, okay, so that's long way down. Now if you want to do long way down, if you notice if you used to press it down, you're twisting it through. So what you've got to do, if you're gonna go a long way down, is you've got to turn the kettlebell down. You got to, from here, you've got to turn the kettlebell outwards, that way. Watch, again, turn, just slow motion. So if we're here, if you wanna go a long way down, twist it that way. Twist it into a four, yeah? So you see that? Twist foot the kettlebell forwards, all right? Otherwise, if you just go down, the kettlebell will be on the top of the wrist still, and then it'll plonk at the bottom when it gets to about here, it'll plonk and it'll jolt you forwards. So you want to just twist it forwards to release the kettlebell. Snatch again, twist it forwards. Let's give it a go. I'll give me a set of five on each side, 10 reps. I'll do them with you. I'll do a first one and I'll check in on you. Then start, deep breath, high transition. Slip and twist. Then to release, twist the wrist forwards, go again. Good, twist. Good, twist. Get that hinge, twist. Whoa, good stuff. Twist. Lovely. 
So as long as you've got good coordination, this one's slightly easier than the, than the straight snatch because there's less, um, there's less work at the wrist, but there's uh, more that could go wrong if you, do, if you, if you miss uh, your coordination. Yeah, good stuff, guys. Hey, Abby, let's try a long way down. Long way down. So up, no, long way down. <laughs> Ten on each side. Good. That's it. So just twist that wrist out. That's it, Abby. Good. Good. Long way down, Neil. Good. Ten on each side. Good, Neil. Give it a bigger throw. Bigger throw up. Good. That's it. Get the kettlebell to float up. Very good, guys. Uh, go. Nice, Raj. Nice. Good. Good. That's it. Good. Good. Just slip those fingers in. Remember, if you're gripping it, it will delay you. Good. Slip the hands through. Ten on each side. Nice work, guys. Nice work. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well done. Okay. Right. Finisher. Ten minute finisher. You, you finish your set. All right. Grab a quick water. All right. So we're going to have a ten minute e model now. So every minute on the minute, we go again for ten minutes. You're going to do your high transition snatch that you've just absolutely nailed. Okay. Um, so you do five transition snatches. So five on each side. That's ten. Within a minute, that's minute one. All right. So five transition snatches on uh, um, each side to so ten reps within the minute. Okay, then finish with double taps, ten double taps. Okay, or, or, or double unders. So you're jumping, you're gonna tap your thighs. Uh, twice before your feet touch the floor again. Do that within the minute. Whatever's left of the minute is your recovery, okay? On minute twos, all on your, your even numbers, it's 10 swings, bracing those abs, okay, 10 swings, and then um, five burpees, chest to floor, okay? Um, Ready, guys? Okay, remember hook grip, hook grip, open hand grip. Ready, in 10, 9, 8. So 10 high transition snatches, long way down or short way down, it's with you. Four, three, two, one, go. One, two, three. Four, straight over your head, not over the side, remember. Cook for the middle. Six, seven, eight, nine, woo, ten. Okay, dead, uh, do all of Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, those two taps in before your feet touch the floor. Okay, next round. 10 swings, five burpees. Chest the floor. Use, if you're sure where you're mobility, use a step or a bench to do your burpees on. Okay, ready in 10 seconds? Strong, aggressive swings. Get that breath right and tight. Five, dead start. Lats down. Three, two, one, go. Chest the floor. Cup of head. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Three to the rest. Twenty seconds. High transition. Well done, team. 15 seconds. Sip some coffee. It was a nice, relaxed workout up until now. Yeah, you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. Go. High transition. One. Two. Three. Four. Slip those fingers in. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Use that hinge. Good stuff. Ten swings coming up. Five burpees. Ten seconds. Catch your breath. Five. Ready? Hands on top. Shoulder legs down. Dead start. Go. One. Two. Seven, punch those hips. Nine, nine, ten, finish with that dead stop. Bad. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Six minutes to go. Six minutes to go. Ten seconds. High transition. In five, four, three. Ready? Two, one, go. Oops. One. Four. 
Three, two, one, go. Hinge. Go. All eyes on you. Last two minutes. One team. Good fitness. Good fitness. Get those burpees in. Whatever's left of the minute is your rest. 15. Last set. High transition. Ready in five. Last set. Press sets. High transition. Three, two, one. And those knees, Raj. Okay, go. Good. Throw it into the middle. Good. Throw it up through the middle. Good. Get it to land soft, Suki. Twist that wrist and on the way down. Twist it down. Good technique. Ooh, nice, Raj. Good stuff. Get it through the middle, Raj. Really open up those shoulders. Adjust the rib cage if you need to, like we did in the warm up. Those. Yeah, that's so much better, Raj. Well done. Dead through the middle. If you throw the bastard up, it'll just float up. Recover, bigger jumps, bash, bigger jumps, bigger jumps. Get up in the air, hop up so you can get two clear taps. Big jumps now, I want bigger than that. I want two clear taps before those toes hit the floor. All right, last set coming up. Big swings. And then um, burpees. All right, here we go, guys. Ready in five, four, big final push. Three, two, one, go. Beat the clock, let's go. Get to work. 10 swings, good hinge and punch, hinge and punch. Good technique, good technique. Push that weight into the heels, punch through the hips. Good, punch that kettlebell off the hips so it floats up. Brace at chest height, armpits down, lats on. Remember how you put that bell down for me, Raj. <laughs> You're back, good, chest to floor. Good bash. Go on, team. Big finish. Absolute dynamite today. Well done. We got the skills. We have got the skills. Nice work, Neil. Job champ. Good, Abby. Go on, bash. Good reps, guys. Go on, Nat. Good job, team. Love it, love it, love it. Right, that's one set. Let's go again. <laughs> hey, well done. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, we'll yes. <laughs> Until the end. It's good. It, we, it was good to slow down so that we could speed up and you, your skills are spot on. Hey, a couple more tips as well. Remember I've spoken, that it's, it, it's milliseconds that you lose out that makes the exercises with the kettlebells difficult. So we spoke about gripping like a dumbbell is no good. We want a hook grip when, it's, when the weight's going down. We want an open hand grip, L on L, when, it's, when we've got control of it over. Um, at shoulder height or above, okay? So below shoulder height, hook grip, above shoulder height, we're slipping our hands in, okay? Um, but also, that speeds things up, but also, if you're wearing gloves, that will also slow it down, okay? But in the same breath, you don't want to start getting calluses and sore hands. So what helps on that occasion is chalk. Best thing, yeah? I mean, you can, you can use gloves, especially if you're doing high rep stuff, you can use gloves. Um, but it will make it a little bit more sticky in the hand. Also, if you've got a plastic handle, it will be sticky. You, ideally, you want a metal handle because it'll just slide. So then the next thing is, is, is getting some chalk and get some liquid chalk off um, uh, my, my protein or salad, Amazon or salad. You get some liquid chalk, squirt a little bit on your hands, rub it in, and it just take the moisture out of your hands while you're doing the kettlebells so it's not starting to callous the hands, okay? Um, oh. So yeah, but other than that, well, that was absolutely spot on. You got a lot out of today's session. You got sometimes to slow down, to speed up, and we certainly did that today. Awesome work. Thanks, Paul. Now go work on your April Fools. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for a stop.